college fees, taxes, bills, insurance, pandemics, your brain developing enough to understand the multiple issues plaguing yourself and the world at large. Isn't growing up just the best? Okay, look, look, it's it's not that bad, all right? If you're an adult watching this, then you've probably got the means to access a multitude of ways to dissipate the pent-up stress flowing through your mind. Some people like to watch movies or YouTube videos, some people work out, some people go out. The options you have at your disposal are pretty vast. But since you're one of the unfortunate souls watching this video, I know exactly what you like to do for your stress relief. You like to take a seat, Make yourself a nice, comfy space for you to be alone, slap on some headphones, and enjoy a nice session of master, fully crafted video games. And nothing else. And what better games to take a load off with than the newest entries in two franchises that are now legitimately old enough to be someone's nostalgia yearning dad. Doom and Animal Crossing have been fulfilling their roles as their premier stress relief aids for years now, except for that one time with Doom and that one time with Animal Crossing, but we don't talk about those anymore. Sure, each series goes about this in completely differing ways, but the job gets done nonetheless. And with each one getting a new entry in their respective franchises, not only soon, but on the same day, I am so sorry what's gonna happen to you, Wallet. It's a good time to take a look at why there's so much hype for these upcoming sequels. Alright, let's start as simple as possible and answer the most basic questions for those of you who may not be too familiar. What are Doom and Animal Crossing all about? Well, you see, Doom is a lovely little Christian FPS for all the good church-going boys and girls. It will teach you about the evils of demons and worshipping hell, all the while you play as Doom Guy, a man on a mission to personally teach those bad, bad hell spawns that trying to take over the world is an immoral task. Using his multiple methods of... Gentle persuasion? He will help those in the underworld turn their heads to the right direction in life. Give them a hand on the road to redemption. And open their minds to a new level of understanding and acceptance. Beautiful. And then there's Animal Crossing New Leaf. A hardcore life simulator where you destroy and harvest the local wildlife, all in a selfish bid to climb higher up the social ladder and fill those pockets with fat stacks of cash and luxurious furniture. But unlike Animal Crossing games of old, you no longer have to answer to a higher power as you immediately seize control of their land and become their new god! With this newfound power, you can dictate how your loyal pawns live their lives and can demand the construction of monuments of worship. You still have to pay off that debt though. Now, I know it sounds like I'm pulling your leg, but honestly, other than the swap moods and dramatization, that's actually what you do in each. Doom is a fast-paced FPS where you kill demons, and Animal Crossing New Leaf is a life sim where you play as the mayor of a town. Those sound like fine ideas, but not multi-million selling ideas. So why have these two games become so popular and revered for their quality then? Two big things in my opinion, direction and execution. Both of these games know exactly what they want to be and what they want to do, and with that mentality you get two games that feel like they had their cores very finely tuned for peak performance before they even thought of adding any additional mechanics. Doom's core lying in its frantic single player shooting, and New Leaf's core lying in its relaxed real time life sim. Also, Animal Crossing has cute animals, which is probably the most universally liked thing next to maybe breathable air. To better explain what I mean, let's take a closer look into each game. Uh, we'll start with Doom. So, we start the game and oh god, yes, the music. As I said, Doom is a frantic FPS, which means you need to be in the right state of mind to get into it. This state of mind is somewhere between a case of Red Bull and 15 testosterone injections. 
So right from the main menu, you get hit with Mick Gordon's lovely soundtrack, and visuals that match a game soaked in more violence than Venezuela. Even the difficulty settings sound like rejected metal album titles. Now, I'm a real man, so I'm gonna go with Ultraviolence. That red text looks a little bit too intimidating for me. Okay, when you start a game, you expect some story, maybe a tutorial, or how about a- He's dead, here's a gun, shoot them in the face! Alright, you may now get yourself comfortable with the controls. Stuff like this is what makes Doom so good. There's no lollygagging here, its software isn't gonna pretend that you don't know what the hell you're doing. You bought this game to shoot demons in the face, and by god that's what they're going to give you. At this point you're either right on their wavelength, or you're going to get right on their wavelength because there ain't no brakes on this train. This immediate setting to tone and attitude is crucial, and expertly done here in Doom and in Animal Crossing. You bought this game to relax with some cute animals, and by goodness is that what Nintendo will let you enjoy. Right from the word go, you get a calming piano tune and some nice, bright, and vibrant colors. The perfect antidote after a hard day's work. Next, we find ourselves on a train where we're encountered by a friendly cat that immediately wants to know everything about us. Enter a name. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm a grown adult here. A town name. <laughs> Oh, comedy gold. And a map layout. After arriving in town, you are hailed as the new mayor, regardless if you want to be or not, and then after some quick explanations from everyone's favorite assistant, Isabel, although if you ask me, some people favor her a bit too much, and getting a house from no one's favorite debt collector, the game tells you to come back tomorrow and lets you spend your free time however. Whether that be fishing, swimming, catching bugs, digging up fossils, assaulting the townsfolk, whatever. You do what you want, when you want. All set to some calming tunes. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that when the game told me to come back tomorrow, I don't mean in-game, I mean real life. Works well in normal circumstances, but unfortunately I don't have a 3DS capture card and I didn't really feel like playing the game for a year for footage, so some loans were made and some time travel devices may or may not have been used. Don't come into any Animal Crossing title and expect to spend hours diving into an ocean of content. There is an ocean, mind you, but you're basically handed a bucket a day to mess with. Turn on the game, play for 15 minutes to an hour, then turn it off and check back tomorrow to see what happens. To call New Leaf a game with a sloth's pace is a hell of an understatement, but that is how it's designed. But it does serve as a nice antithesis to the pace of Doom, which is like a rabbit that had three lines of coke sprinkled onto the rocket shoved up its ass. However, like a good rabbit rocket, the game knows that you can't be going full throttle all the time. I'll get to what I mean by that in a bit. First, I should say that the gameplay here is refreshingly old school in design. After a mountain of Modern Warfare and Halo knockoffs and sequels in the prior years, it felt so good in 2016 to get a game like this. No regenerating health system, no reloading, no weapon carry limit, no sensible architecture. Everything here is designed for a fun, fast-paced experience. Yes, fun. I know many AAA developers have forgotten the meaning of that word in their pursuit to be as realistic and depressed as possible, but just to set it straight, staring at a wall and waiting for a shield to recharge or pink eye to go away is not fun. But do you know what is fun? Circle strafing and double jumping around a room whilst destroying a horde of demons with an absurdly huge arsenal in your back pocket and having to do this while keeping track of any surrounding pickups to keep your armor, health, and ammo in check. Don't get me wrong, there are some modern mechanics that Doom did pick up but in this case they're used brilliantly to enhance the core gameplay. As an example, the glory kill system is a brutal finishing move you can do to enemies at low health. Sounds satisfying, albeit flow disrupting and kinda pointless, until you realize that it makes the enemies drop health and that the animations are about half a second long. Same thing with the chainsaw, except this one turns an enemy into an ammo pinata. All this stuff with the high movement speed, satisfying weaponry, pickups, double jumps, glory kills, etc. all blends beautifully into this buttery smooth flow of violence and blood that really demands your attention in the moment while simultaneously making you pre-plan your next move split second by split second. Unlike New Leaf, which has no problem letting you fish for 7 hours if your heart so desires, there's only one opposition in the game and that's time. Sure, you have debts to pay off, but money is easy to make. Just pick up whatever you find and take it to the second-hand shop. Seriously though, how does this economy even work? 
And even then, you can pay off the debts whenever you please, and there's not really any penalty for not paying it, other than an inability to request another house upgrade which just puts you in more debt. But eventually, you'll get bored for the day and you'll shut the game off, but not before the game gives you a hint or outright tells you that something might be coming tomorrow, whether that be via a villager telling you something, a note on the billboard, or a new object on the map. And this is how New Leaf, and really the whole Animal Crossing franchise, gets you. This drip feeding of events may not seem like much at the time you're playing, but remember what I said earlier. This game does have a notion of content, so as you keep coming back in day after day for 15, 30, 45 minutes, your playtime will really add up. Just taking a bit I played in this video for example, I was introduced into town and given a tent to stay in for the day, messed around for a bit, talked to all the pleasant villagers, but oops, looks like I can't actually do any mayor stuff until my processing is done tomorrow. That's it for the day, 15-30 minutes spent. Next day I emerge from my tent, talk to all the villagers again, pay off my down payment for the house, and finally take my seat for my mayoral duties. But oops again, you won't actually get your house until tomorrow, and you still can't do any mayor stuff until your approval rating is at 100% which will take a few days. 30 minutes are spent for this day, and the next two is I engage in town activities to raise my approval rating, and just soak in the comforting atmosphere. Congrats! Even at my cheating pace, I still spent 2 hours in 4 days. Doesn't sound bad when you put it like that, until you realize that this game has enough content to keep you coming back daily for more than a year. And again, 30 minutes a day is me going at a breakneck pace. I can tell you there were days on my old 3DS where I spent more than triple that time depending on what was happening that day. Gotta admit though, seeing your town grow little by little is a meticulous yet oddly satisfying experience. It's like an addiction. Actually no, it is one. Animal Crossing becomes an addiction, plain and simple. It's not a potentially life ruining addiction like a gacha game or crack where you blow every paycheck you get for that next hit every month until you either burn out, go broke, or OD, but a comfy, stable one, like being addicted to a coffee shop. Sure, you only spend seven bucks a day there, but you've been going there for three years straight now and have slowly given the owner of that place more money than the gacho or crack dealer could ever dream of. You know, maybe with all the money the coffee shop owner has accumulated over the years, he could buy a single shit for the player or Doom guy to give about the story in Doom. It is there, it's actually quite interesting, and there's a lot of it you can read through the dossiers you pick up throughout the game, but this is a rare moment where the devs understood that the player's interest in the story in a game like this would be lower than the Mariana Trench. So they had the Protag act the same. We're only temporarily disabling the tower. You need to remove each lens individually. Carefully release the hinges. To characters like Samuel Hayden and Olivia Pierce, there's a bitter struggle going on for either the destruction or salvation of humanity, along with the ethical questioning of using hell as a source of power. To the player in Doomguy, the story is, demons bad, kill demons. Violently. There's really only like three or four times in the game where you're stopped and forced to listen to an exposition dump. Every other time I would have someone talk to me about something that was probably important, but I- Ooh, a collectible. Ah yes, this brings me to the other half of Doom's gameplay that makes it so great, the exploration. Remember how I said a bit ago that Doom is like a good rabbit rocket? Well, much like New Leaf, the game understands that constantly making the player do the same thing for hours on end makes the experience become dull, so it paces itself in the level design, and the music, and pretty much everything else in between. The high intensity running gunplay is fun, yes, but if you had to do that for 10 hours straight, you'd burn out after the first. So to alleviate this issue, Doom has each level designed like a massive jungle gym, with goodies packed into every nook and cranny you can poke your head into. Also helps that the movement controls are probably the best in any FPS, allowing you to move around the maps with ease, except for the few times when the ledge grab doesn't feel like working. And again, like Animal Crossing, the game gives you a steady supply of dopamine hits. For every seeker you find, enemy you kill, and challenge you complete, you're consistently rewarded with not only weapons, weapon mods, armor and ammo, but also upgrade points and runes which happily fuel more efficient ways to unlife those poor poor demons. And the best part about the upgrade system is that you can immediately feel a difference from each change. No 5% increase to reload speed here, 
How about we get things instead like an immunity to explosive barrels, chain stun burst for the plasma rifle, or infinite ammo if a certain criteria is met. Oh, and by the by, I don't think I understood what true love was until I had my hands firmly grasped onto a not overheating infinite ammo mobile turret. Watching it turn the opposition into chunky red tomato sauce with such overbearing power made me feel some... forbidden feel- So there are issues I have with each game, and normally I would go over them in greater detail, but that would be like criticizing the specks of dust on a golden statue. They're there, but it doesn't really affect any overall enjoyment of the experience. Like I said, the foundations of these games are very strong. Still, it should be mentioned, so let me go over them quickly. With Doom, the problem lies in the other two modes, multiplayer and snap map. Snap map is a level creator with some cool creations buried under the mountains of garbage, but it only allows for the construction of simpler maps. Works fine for the open area shootouts or classic level remakes, but you end up losing the great exploration half of Doom's gameplay. Maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I wasn't able to find a single creation on Snap Map that also had satisfying exploration. Just lots of narrow corridors that led to open area gangbangs. Also, loading up Snap Map is horrendously slow. Multiplayer, on the other hand, is just like an afterthought, like it was added at the last minute before release, kind of like 007 Goldeneye, but in this case, the gameplay doesn't translate as well into multiplayer. Unreal Tournament, this is not. You have your basic modes, basic customization, loadouts, ah, I know this is for balancing purposes, but two weapon loadouts should never be a phrase associated with Doom. Nothing terrible here mind you, but it doesn't really do anything attention grabbing other than the ability to play as the demons, which is actually a fun time. But you could also be spending that time playing the much better campaign, which is what most people do, because not only does it take forever to even find a match, but when I did and got the achievement for getting to level 5, I found out that only 13% of the people that own Doom on Steam actually got it. Getting to level 5 only took me 2 matches by the way. Finally, you really get an appreciation for Mick Gordon after playing multiplayer because Doom gameplay with no music? Oof, rough. Otherwise, it's just kinda there. Oh, but there are a bunch of fun dances you can unlock. And this. For New Leaf, the problems are really only there if you're not on board with the pace, which I totally understand if you aren't. Being left with nothing but the daily routine for just the hope that maybe something will happen the next day can be quite frustrating. There are a ton of events that can happen, but that doesn't mean something will happen every single day. Thankfully, the game doesn't give you too much guff for not playing the game for a day or two, but it will guilt trip you for just having the gall to not play it for... a while. However, I see the scheduling as a necessary evil now, because I now know that playing New Leaf with time skips reveals that all the fishing, or finding, talking to villagers, etc. is really boring at a rapid pace. Especially not helped with the fact that the villagers are much more one note compared to older titles. The real time you wait builds up a nice anticipation and a refreshed vigor to play the game. Playing the way I did made me feel like I ran through 50 lion bars. Fun at first, but by the end I was sick of doing the same identical thing every single day. Just ended up skipping the day after doing the bare minimum. This is truly a game that needs to be enjoyed in a spaced out, small burst. Oh, and this is also in the game. But hey, when the enjoyment is there, it's some of the best in the genre. Same for Doom. Hopefully I was able to give you some insight as to why these games are so loved by many. And I'm happy to report that after replaying each a couple years later, they still stand tall in their fields. And with Doom Eternal and New Horizons looking like even better versions of their predecessors, I think these IPs won't be getting knocked off anytime soon. But there is still one lingering question that needs to be answered. Which game will be better? Well, I've got the answer, and after extensive research and number crunching, I have scientifically determined that the best choice to throw your hard-earned money at would be... Rune Factory! It's got better life sim content than New Leaf while having intense combat like Doom. Please buy Rune Factory 4 and 5, I don't want the franchise to die again, I got so scared a couple years ago I didn't know what to do. Hey, guess who's back? Uh, again. Um, hey, if you watch this video, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you're one of my few subscribers I have at the moment, I very much appreciate you guys sticking with me for this time, you know, where I like to disappear for no reason and give no reason at all while I'm gone as well. Uh, if you notice, I kind of 
tone down my editing a little bit on this video, try to make it a bit easier for me, as I'm starting college right now, actually, so I wanted to see, you know, try and juggle between my job doing this YouTube thing, I'm actually going to learn a second language, too, um, if I can handle all this. I'm not ever going to make any more promises or say that I'm working on something for the future, but I will say that I have something I want to do by the end of this month, but again, we'll see. Maybe it'll be out, maybe I'll disappear for another couple months, who knows. Again, thank you very much. If you like what you saw, please subscribe, and y'all have a good day. Thank you.